All right, Rogers TV, breaking down every position across the SEC. We stop in Oxford, and we go to the place where it all starts on offense, the offensive line. Got a block to let the uh, skilled guys do their thing. So we bring in Courtney Smith from the Rebel Walk to help us size up. Courtney, this offensive front that uh, for the first time since uh, 2012 goes at it without uh, the man, Laramie Tunzel. You know, that's going to be a difficult task. You know, Freeze has said all over again. He has said he said in the spring, he said on draft night, it's going to be hard to replace Lermy Tunsil. Because Lermy Tunsil brought so much. Anytime Tunsil, anytime defenses brought two guys at him, that lets you know how dangerous he was. They they brought two guys, they they would bring two guys at him to try to get somehow get around him. And so at times, he was still able to handle two guys. That's how big and strong he was. And he was the primary reason once once he got back after the Texas A&M game. He was the reason. He was the, he was the, he was the key piece to the offensive line staying together. Because there were times before when he wasn't playing, when he missed those seven games, Kelly was getting hit a little bit too much. And, and the, that, that left tackle position, was was I, I know there were guys filling in and you know freeze was was swapping in guys in and out on the offensive line but it was hard to replace Tunsil at their left tackle position defenses were definitely coming at Kelly because without Tunsil you know it, it was it was things were becoming difficult at times for this Ole Miss offense but once he got back everyone got healthy things really looked well for the Ole Miss offense and you know, thanks to Tonsil and the rest of those guys, Kelly, they were the reason Kelly was able to lead the SEC in passing and break so many records at Ole Miss. So replacing Tonsil is going to be very, very difficult. But Freeze, just like he did with the running backs and other positions, he recruited well enough to hopefully fill that void. Yeah, as you talk about Tunsil, Courtney, you know this. Uh, despite where he was drafted, we know the controversy surrounding Laramie Tunsil. And even if that wouldn't have happened, he probably wasn't going number one because of the quarterback position. But most draft experts said he was pound for pound the best player in the draft, regardless of where he was going to get drafted, probably top five before the controversy hit, but that he was just the best player in the draft. And uh, we only see a, about three or four of these guys a decade that are that dominant at tackle. So fortunately, yeah, the recruiting rankings say that there are tons of guys coming into the program in the last two recruiting classes that should be stout, including this Gregory Little, who's also the number one rated left tackle. I don't think he's projected to be quite that all pro type dominance uh, at the next level, but out of uh, Allen, Texas, Gregory Little. And I, I know you feel comfortable, pretty, pretty confident and comfortable with the rest of the guys that are coming back. Oh, yeah. I mean, you, you have to be. When you got Javon Patterson, Sean Rollins, Jordan Sims, Robert Conyers coming back, that's that's a plus That because all these guys played last year. All of these guys were thrown in the fire last year to play on the offensive line because you had so many – you had a lot of injuries last year. You know, Thompson wasn't hurt, but he was dealing with an NCAA uh, investigation that prohibited him from playing. So Freeze didn't have a set – Start starting starters. He didn't have any sets, you know, for the Ole Miss offensive line. He had to grow, go with multiple guys. He had to ch he had to make some changes wherever he saw fit, and it was unfortunate. But the good thing out of it was, despite all of those changes on the offensive line from last year, he brings back everyone that played last year. You know, guys that that were thrown in as second string offensive linemen that had to play due to injuries, you know, Rod, Rod Taylor is, is, is one, you know, Conyers, Sims, Patterson, Sean Rollins. Then on top of that, you bring in Bryce Matthews from Brentwood, Tennessee. You bring in Ross Newman. You bring in Chandler to it. You know, he, he's definitely put emphasis on the offensive line. I think this offensive line would do, would do well if everyone stays healthy. But of course, you know, that's not guaranteed in football, you know, injuries happen. And you know, never know. Newman to it, Little or Matthews might be called upon early to step in and play in a competitive SEC on any given Saturday, whether it's at home or on the road. 
So, yeah, there's uh, five players here listed in the top 20, basically top 25 at their positions, led by Gregory Little just in this last recruiting class. And you mentioned most of those guys, Chandler Tuit, uh, Little, Royce Newman. So you're thinking that these guys are going to be thrown into the fray as, as just babies here, true freshmen. Yeah, yeah I, I think so. And I think Freeze is going to do that to see what they got. He wants to see, okay, you're a four-star recruit. You're a five-star recruit. Prove me that you you can live up to that. You know he kind of made he kind of says he kind of made some comments like that during the spring with this talented 2016 class that was rated number four in the country by ESPN. He said guys that are going to play in some of these positions. He's gonna throw them out there early. He wants to see what they're made of. You know what are their strengths? What are their weaknesses? And so don't be surprised. Gregory Little is thrown out there early. He's one guy I, I think would be thrown out there early. Matthews, Newman, and Tua, you would see them later on. But Little is definitely going to be thrown out there because he it has been said he he's going to take over for Tonsil at the left tackle position. So Freeze is definitely would definitely uh, be eager to see what is this kid made of. Is he one's been talking about? Or is he someone that's going to have to, it's, it's like a year or two, he's like a work in progress. So with a quarterback who can spin it just about as well as anybody in the country, maybe the best pass catching tight end in the country, all the wide receiver talent you have, even though you lost Laquan Treadwell, probably the best in the country. The success of this uh, offense probably comes down to these, uh, these kids playing on the offensive line and being able to make uh, everything else go. I mean, you're gonna you're gonna you're gonna have to block Kelly. You're gonna have to block for Kelly. You can't let him get hit or sacked like he did last year. You know, you know, with all those injuries, all those injuries on the offensive line last year, you know, definitely had an impact on Kelly getting getting rushed, getting hit. You know, I mean, he was he was he was seeing all he was seeing all kinds of 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 of, of blitzes last year. You know, they were coming at him. You know, because of their offensive line was just so banged up that, you know, freeze, there was something that was out of freeze control. I mean, those guys just um, had unfortunate injuries. And so, like I said, if everyone's healthy, this, this Ole Miss offense can do what it did last year, put up numbers, you know, lead the SEC in, 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 to, in, in total offense. Kelly can have another spectacular year. The running game can hopefully somehow get over the hump of being a steady power attack that will help Kelly and he has the receivers to throw it to but it starts with the offensive line can these guys block for him now I have faith in the guys returning it's just the guys the incoming freshmen you just don't know much about you just have heard that they are great but can they be great in the SEC which you know most people think is the toughest conference in college football I tell you, Courtney, it's going to be intriguing because, like I say, uh, you lose the best player at left tackle and wide receiver in the country, but you've got a great quarterback and you've got uh, receiving threats all over the field. It's going to come down to this power running game and protecting Kelly, and uh, you don't get a, a breather to start the season. You face off against Florida State, and they're going to bring the defense. So it's going to be very, very interesting to see if the Rebels uh, have some issues because of the offensive line or – if the offensive line holds the fort, I think this is one of the five or ten best offenses in the country. Oh, yeah. No, there's, there's no doubt. Offensive line, stay healthy. Whoever gets in there has to block for them, whether you're playing left tackle, right tackle, or center. Do If those guys do their job, this Miss offense is going to put up big numbers, huge numbers. Kelly is definitely going to duplicate what he did last year. Uh, I just don't see – him declining. I, I I see him having the type of year, type of two years Manziel had at Texas A&M. You know, that first year you, you put up big numbers. Second year you put up bigger numbers than you did your first year at the university. I think Kelly can can do can do the same thing and get, get Ole Miss back to another New Year's Day six bowl. All right, Courtney Smith from the Rebel Walk helping us break down the offensive line there at Ole Miss. A lot of questions, but a lot of talent to talk about there. Appreciate it, Courtney. All right, man. Take care.